Day three of VidCon, hopefully going to be getting to some panels today, if we're lucky, signings as well. But today's schedule is pretty tight, a lot of conflict of the things that I want to do, which is unfortunate, but I Right now I'm waiting in the Intro to Making Video Look Good panel, which starts in about 10 minutes, hosted by all these wonderful people. I guess those are all blank cards, but you'll see them when they get here, assuming video is allowed, of course. My name is Brandon Lush. I started doing YouTube in 2010. I directed and uh, created and ideated videos for the uh, Freddy W channel formerly. Hi, I'm Tessa Violet. Um, I have a YouTube channel, Kitty, and I do video blogs. And I also directed the music videos. Hey, everybody. I'm Zach. Uh, I'm a partner at Portal A. We're a production company, creative studio based in San Francisco and Los Angeles. And you do the annual YouTube video. Hi, I'm Hilly. And this is Hannah. I'm Hannah. We're the creators of The Hollywood Show. We make epic parodies of your famous movies and TV shows. <coughs> and you can recognize that like MTV, Ryan Seacrest, Lady Gaga, and things, and BBC America, and things like that. So, hi, everybody. Hi. You guys can clap. It's okay. You can roll up. Does anybody have anything to say about the importance of the frame rate? The film is done in 24 frames per second. People say that 60 frames per second makes things look like daytime soap TV. I kind of like it. To me, I'm like, ooh, it's like, ooh, yeah. But I guess I'm just attracted to cheap things. Film has been played back for our entire lifetimes in 24 frames per second, and TV's been played back in 30 frames per second. And I, I theorize that because it's been done like that, that you perceive 24 frames per second as more quality than TV at 30 frames a second. If it was the other way around, it would be a much easier transition to go to higher frame rates. But ultimately, I think it's just really, it's just your comfortability of spending time with different, uh, different frame rates and stuff. A good video game is usually 60 frames a second. So yeah. maybe if you're doing like an um, awesome like, video game parody, maybe 60 frames is what you want to make it feel more like that. So. <coughs> that said, I've never seen, I've never seen the frame rate make it break something. And if you guys are trying to shoot in slow motion, tip do not shoot lower than 60 frames per second because the slow motion will be poop. If you take anything out of this pen, oh your slow motion will be poop. <laughs> As a young producer, I have the ability to start to build your network of people who are obsessed with lighting or obsessed with sound. Um, so we cultivated a really good group of people who are with us. How much do you guys think about your lens choice? I always feel weird going first, and I feel like everyone right. side is smarter than me, so it's like I get the dumb answer, everyone else figures out what was wrong with it. And <laughs> My answer is the same to the lighting question. Go out and become best friends with somebody who loves lenses. <laughs> Find that person, bring them into your family. A couple times I've mentioned Um, the next thing I had in my notes was talking about 
sounding good in addition to looking good, but we, uh, we jumped ahead and talked about that already. So that was the last thing that I had in my notes. I think it's uh, time to open up for questions. I have a quick tip for sounding good on a budget. I'm ready. Um, when I film my videos a lot exclusively, like the last three and also the last ones I've used music for, I use the voice memo app on my phone and I just set it right next to me out of frame and I get a lot clearer sound from my phone than I do from my camera and it's like the, just the cheapest solution for like super okay audio. As content creators, do you aspire to mix your audio in 5.1 surround sound, particularly as YouTube is available on TV apps with home theater systems and that kind of thing? Well, I use the voice memo app on my phone. <laughs> 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 what would be the right time to invest to go to move up, upgrade your equipment? Maybe kind of like adjust your question and then throw it back at you guys. At what point in your specific careers on YouTube did you decide, okay, now I want to like step up my game and focus on making stuff that is visually beautiful as opposed to just talking to the camera? I don't really think, uh, I don't really think in terms of like my equipment limiting the art. You know, it's, it's you do what you have when you have it and you don't let that stop you. I think it's very, it's very troublesome when people say, well, I'm going to do this short. As soon as I save enough money on my job to do, to buy this business or this business, just make with what you have right now. And let that let that speak for itself. And it's, it's kind of nice to have your back pocket. You know that whatever you did, if you had a camera that had two more shots than that range, it would just it's like, okay, so that part being blown out would have been it would have been there. The actual process of it doesn't really affect the quiet. And ultimately you should just be looking for your next product anyways. If you can nice things, don't worry about what the current process would look like. Just keep going. In terms of upgrading equipment, I uh, I kind of prioritize it based on things that I need that I really use. Uh, with luxury, we have a lot of equipment sponsors come in and give us give us all kinds of various things, which at the time, we thought it was fantastic, but ultimately, it just ends up taking a lot, a lot of closet space because we've actually practiced so much with what we had. We just like using stuff that we actually had. So, other than upgrading the camera, we didn't really do a whole lot in terms of uh, in terms of other equipment adding onto it. I still prefer the running gun process and just use digital technology to fix it later. Just take the time to realize that you know, you, you want it now, but patience is a virtue. Um, I know for us, once YouTube was like bitch, do you all of a sudden? It was just like. <laughs> We, got, we spent money on a standard definition, cool Panasonic camera that we thought would be good. But we had to save up and have to you know, take the patients over it, and we get to play a night quality, you know, instead of HD. Um, so it's just taking the time and just realizing that you, you're not going to be a Hollywood camera until you just take practice. And, you know, you're, you're human. You're not a super money person. So Another tip just for you guys when you ask, you know, like, how did it become... You know, like, your, how did your quality become better over the years? Watch movies or music videos, and just watch a shot and go, how did that? How did they create that shot? There are some very strange scenes that you go, how did they do that? Or it's very artistic, and the camera is spinning, and it's like upside down, and it's going that way. Right? How did they do that? You can become very inspired by a certain shot, and I think that would help you guys to create different, like angles and scenes and take it to the next level for you guys. So just study some stuff that's already out there. Also watch all of the special features of the extended editions of Lord of the Rings. Yes! <laughs> I tend to get caught up in the need to make 
make it perfect. One time I took nine months to do a music video, which was insane. And I was just like, oh, I just don't feel great about it. I finally put it out and it's fine. Where the tricky part is, is not letting yourself feel lazy about it and being like, oh, this is good enough. And then immediately you upload and you're like, oh, why did I do this? That's my line. Know that it will never be as good as I want it to be, but don't let it embarrass me. Yeah, if you look at something you made and you're like, this is good, that's, that's the best thing, because that means you have good taste. <laughs> you look at it and you're like, okay, here are the things I want to improve to do next time. If you look at something you made and it's like, it's great, then you're done. And with that, it kind of looks like we're out of time. It's now 1.45. I just rushed down to the signing hall in hopes of getting in line for the Red and Link photo hall thing. The panel is very interesting. I'll make a highlight reel and put it in here along with the full upload as a bonus video. We're getting closer. We're not going to let all these people do that. It's, it's, it's nice at this point people back there. It wasn't what they were we got a picture with them, and then I rushed upstairs to catch the second half of a panel on video quality on YouTube. Missed most of the panel, but I did get to hear some audience Q&A that was rather interesting. And then afterwards, got to get my book signed. Good. Sorry about the shakiness of that. I'm headed downstairs now to try and make it to Rhett and Link's studios booth because they are doing some actual signings there Maybe if you run really uh, starting fast. like now so hopefully I can get <laughs> kind of near the front of the line so I can I know, jump in line for Vsauce right after that but we'll see the time is now 304 can't line up for them yet because the people before them are still still have a line so I'm gonna go walk around until about 345 and then get back in line there so I changed my mind. I'm going to go ahead and jump in the line for Vsauce since it's pretty short right now. Hopefully get that done quickly and I can run upstairs for Rhett and Link before their thing's over. Just got through the Vsauce line. Got about 10 minutes to spare before the Rhett and Link thing is scheduled to end. So I'm on my way there. Hopefully I can make it. It is now 4.38. Well, I got there with five minutes to spare, but I guess they'd gotten through everybody because Rhett and Link had already left for their hotel. Anyway, now I just have to decide what I'm gonna do in the approximately four hours until the ROM starts. I'll probably just wander around and see what happens like I did yesterday. I was on my way to get in line for the dance thing, but then I saw this line. I guess this line for the Fine Brothers. I didn't get a picture with them last time, so. Hi, we're the Fine Brothers. And now I've got to get to the other thing before it's over. I guess that slight break was good because the line is just starting to move, looks like. Officially inside and headed into the arena where it sounds rather loud comparatively to the other nights. I'm not vlogging that much, but I've been a bit busy with uh, Andrew, do you want to explain what we're doing? So, we've been going into uh, just random places, places that look kind of open, start doing some really simple dance, and just we just keep doing it, and it eventually catches on. Attempting to lead conga lines, those never really took off, but a few other people had better conga lines than us, more successful. Yeah, so we're just doing the old Rick Roll classic. Would you demonstrate? Please, let me back up a bit. Determination is all it took. <laughs> 
keep doing it until someone joins. And usually once we get the third person, it goes pretty quick yeah. after that. In case you can't tell, a bit sweaty, so we're getting some hydration right now. It is now approximately nine minutes past midnight. My phone is dead, so hopefully Yak will come and pick me up in the right place before too long. I asked one of the blokes sitting around here if he could tweet at him for me, and he did. Thank you, random person. So hopefully he'll be here before too long, because I'm a bit tired. Via. It is now 1.11. Still no Yak, as far as I've seen. I had a, a random guy, a different random guy, tweet at him because the first one I accidentally sent to the wrong address, but that was still about five minutes ago. It's now about half past one, still no ride, so I'm going to walk around and see if there's anything better I could be doing with my time. I walked around for a bit, met a few interesting people, but after an hour or so I got tired, so I just decided to head over to the Hilton and order a cab. As I walked up to the front desk to do this, I literally almost ran into Megan Tongis. But seeing as it was about 2.30 in the morning and she was obviously rather tired heading back to her room at the Hilton, I elected not to bother her and so didn't get her signature until later. At the show at the Night Owl I mentioned in a weekly update and arrived back at my aunt's house via the taxi without incident. Via. 